Good day grade 12. Welcome to the second last week of your year. In this lesson we're going to be revising for your final exams and this week we're going to be looking at paper 1 questions. Next week we'll do paper 2. So let's get started straight away with the multiple choice questions and guys this is not multiple guess this is multiple choice. Okay it says a learner pulls a block at a constant speed over a rough horizontal surface with a force F. Okay, so he's pulling into the force F, but he's going at a constant speed. So before we see anything else, do you agree that if he's pulling it at a constant speed, then F net is equal to zero. There is no acceleration. There is no acceleration. I don't know why I'm writing is not equal to naught. Acceleration <laughs> equals is not happening. Okay, there is no acceleration. Now it says if which one of the following relationships between the magnitudes of the forces F, X, Y, and Z are true? Okay, do you agree that X and Z have to be equal? So therefore X has to equal Z. So really we've elim elim eliminated two of the options. Now let's talk about F and Y. If there is a constant speed, the net force is zero, which means the force forward has to equal the force backwards. So therefore the correct answer has to be C. Right, next question. A stone is thrown vertically upwards into the air. Okay, so you've got a stone and it's been thrown vertically upwards into the air. It says which combination in the table below shows the correct change in momentum and the potential energy of the stone. Okay, so do you agree that as we go up the potential energy is going to increase because the further we go up the further we get to come down again. So the potential energy is going to increase. So therefore we can click those two. Okay, so again we've eliminated two options. How nice is that? And grade 12s, this is honestly how I do the multiple choice, okay? Especially when you've got choices like this, not just calculations. I go along and I read the question, I decide, well, what do I think is easier to think about, momentum or potential energy? Straight off the bat, I think potential energy is easier to think about. I identify what I know about that and then I move on to the momentum. Also, if at this point in time you're going through a multiple choice and you think, oh, I'm not sure if it's between A and B, at least now you have minimized your options. So then later, towards the end of the exam, if you haven't got a chance to come back and rethink this, you can then just scribble down an answer and you've then got a 50% chance of getting it right compared to a 25% chance of getting it right. And great tools, one more thing. Please do not leave out any multiple choice questions. There's no negative marking. It is stupid. You've got a 25% chance of getting the question right by just filling in A, B, C or D. Okay, and now by doing this, you've got a 50% chance of getting it right. Okay, so let's try it and look at this now. So we've got momentum. So momentum is mass times velocity. The mass of the stone remains the same, but what is happening to the velocity as it goes up? The velocity is decreasing. So therefore, our momentum is decreasing and the correct answer is B. Now it says two masses, mx and my, are placed a distance r apart. A third mass, mz, experiences zero horizontal gravitational force. So this F net, do you agree, is zero. It's got a net force of zero. When it is placed three quarters of an r of the radius away. Okay, so that's three quarter r, so then obviously this is one quarter r. The thing that says the ratio of the two masses is what? Okay, so this is a little bit of a tricky question. So let's think about this. Okay, do you agree that if I had to look at the force of these two here, we're going to call it F of XZ? Do you agree we've got G, mass of X, mass of Z over 3 over 4? are all squared. Okay, so do you agree that I could write that as G mass of X mass of Z? That becomes 3 squared is 9 over 16 all R squared. And then to make it pretty I'm going to write that as 16 G mass of X mass of Z 
all over 9 r squared. I just tip and times it because I'm dividing by 9 over 16. So that is the force between x and z. Okay, now let's look at the force between M, Z and Y. So now we've got the force between Z and Y. That is going to be G, mass of Z, mass of Y, all over 1 over 4, all R squared. So do you agree therefore we got G, mass of Z, mass of Y, all over R squared over 16 which therefore is 16 G M Z M Y over R squared. So do you see the difference between these is this 9? So that is the ratio that we're looking for and therefore the correct answer is C. Now it says, two charged spheres V and W are located on a straight line. So we've got V and we've got W and it's located on a straight line. X, Y and Z are three points. X, Y and Z are three points on the same straight line. The positions of points X, Y and Z are as indicated and the direction of the and the direction of the net electric field at points X, Y and Z is shown in the diagram below. Okay, so it says, let's try again, two charged spheres V and W, X, Y and Z are three points in the same. The positions of X, Y and Z are as indicated and the direction of the net electric field at points X, Y and Z is shown. So the net electric field at X is to the left, the net electric field is to the Y here and W is to the Z is to the right as well. So electric field lines will always go from positive to negative, right? Now it says which one of the following combinations represents the charges on each of the spheres V and W? Well do you agree that since it's going away from Z and it's supposed to be from positive to negative, let's see what could work. Okay, if it was going from positive to negative then I would say he has to be positive and then W should be positive as well. Um, the other option, there it is, positive and positive. There you go. Okay, so there you go. It is answer is positive and positive. Now it says the battery in the diagram below is a negligible internal resistance, so we can ignore it. In this, if the circuit in this, if the current in the circuit is one amp, the component indicated by X is what? and they want to know if it's a light bulb, a cell, an ammeter or a switch. Okay, so yeah, they tell us we have five volts in total and we know that there's one ampere going through this. So therefore, if we use Ohm's law where V is equal to IR, then we can say that the resistance here has to be um, four. Okay, four ohms. Okay, so that means we've used up 4 volts there. If we then multiply the current here, which is 1, by the resistance, we get that the voltmeter reading here should be 2 volts. So therefore, do you see that 2 volts and 4 volts is 6 volts, but this battery is only supplying 5 volts. So therefore, this dude has to be a cell so that this circuit works because it needs more power. So the correct answer here is B. Now it says three identical light bulbs, X, Y and Z, so they're identical, are connected in the circuit diagram as shown below. The internal resistance of the battery is again negligible and it says when, S, when switch S is closed, the reading on ammeter A1 is 2.5 amps. Okay. Now it says which one of the following options correctly describes the readings on the ammeters if light bulb Z burns out? Okay, so when this is working, do you agree that this is going to happen? The current in here is going to be 2.5 amps, okay? Then this is going to split. The current in here is going to be 1,25 uh, and the current here is going to be 1,25. But remember that the resistance here is lower than what happens when this 
goes away, what happens to the total resistance? The total resistance is going to increase, which means the total current is going to decrease. The total current in the circuit is going to decrease. Do you agree that there is going to be no current in A3 because the I mean, this light bulb is burnt out? So it's either one of these three, it's one of these three answers, yeah. Then we know that the current in A has to go down. And why does it have to go down? Because the total resistance has gone up, so therefore that is true. And because it's a series circuit, the ammeter 1 has to read the same as ammeter 2, and they do. So therefore the correct answer here is C. Hmm, nice question. Now it says two strong bar magnets are arranged in, in, with the north pole there and the south pole there. And each other, as shown in the diagram, a current carrying conductor is placed between the two magnets. Okay, so that's going into the page. And it carries into the plane of the page. The conductor experiences a force in the direction of. Okay, so do you agree that you can use your right hand wire rule and you can draw lines like this? that show that the current and the field around this current carrying conductor is clockwise, is clockwise, okay? We also know that, let me just show you in color, that the field here are from north to south, from north to south. So do you see that what is happening here is that here the fields are being, if you have constructive interference happening, so they're being increased, whereas here you've got the destructive interference. So what's going to happen is this is going to be, the wire is going to be pushed down, it's going to experience a force downwards, which is towards L. Now it says, in the graph below, the solid run represents the EMF produced by a simple generator changing with time. So you can see it's an alternating and it's a simple generator. Okay, the dotted line shows the output of the same generator after change is made to the generator. So now do you see that not only has it increased the amplitude, but it seems to have halved the the full wavelength. Okay, it seems to have the wavelength. Now it says what change is made to produce this result? So it could be that the speed of the rotation was doubled, okay, because that would definitely increase the rate, okay. The splittering commutator is added, that's got nothing to do with it. The strength of the magnets doubled, that again is not going to change the wavelength. The amount of turns in the coil is doubled. I would say that that is your correct answer because by increasing the number of turns, not only are you increasing the voltage, but you're increasing the rate at which you think that the rate at which the flux is changing. So I would say the correct answer here is A. Now it says, the diagram below shows possible transitions of elements of A between energy levels E1 to E4 in an atom of a specific element. Okay, so we've got A, B, C, D, E, okay, and A and B and E are dropping from e, F, E4 to E1, and C and D are increasing. So C and D, what's actually happening is that they're absorbing energy to go from the inner energy level to the outer and A, B and E they're giving off. So then they say which transition will produce the line with the shortest wavelength of emission spectra. So since we're looking at emission spectra we're getting light given off. So therefore we're either looking at A, B or E. So we're either looking at A or E apparently because C and D are not included. Okay, so it's either A or E. And now they want to know the shortest wavelength. Okay, so we know that E is equal to HF, which can be written as HC over wavelength. Okay, so H is Planck's constant, C is the speed of light. So basically, can we say E is inversely proportional to 1 over the wavelength? 
So the shorter the wavelength, the greater the energy, and the longer the wavelength, the smaller the energy. So they want the shortest wavelength, which is going to be the greatest energy change, which is therefore E. Right, good question. Now it says, a bundle of green light is incident on the cathode of a photoelectric cell. The milliamp meter registers a current in the circuit. Okay, that's pretty cool. The green light is removed and blue light with a lower intensity is entered on the same photoelectric cell. How does the amount of photoelectrons released per second and the speed of the photoelectrons compare when blue light is used? Okay, so what you need to understand is that we've got Roy, red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, blue, okay, Roy G. Biv. Okay, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Then we've got infrared and we've got ultraviolet. So the reason I remember it like this is because the violet is next to the ultraviolet and the infrared is next to the red. So ultraviolet has got way more energy than infrared, so therefore we know that violet has got more energy than, for example, the red. So therefore blue light has got more energy and therefore a higher frequency than green light. That's basically what I'm trying to point out here. So blue light has got a higher energy and a higher frequency than green light. Now the second thing we need to think about is that E, which is equal to HF0, F is equal to HF0 plus EK. Okay, that is your formula for your photoelectric effect. And this is the frequency of the incident light, the incident incident light. This here is your threshold frequency and together they make the work function. And this here is your kinetic energy which gives you the speed of the photoelectrons. And here you can see the frequency affects the speed of the photoelectrons. Okay, so the higher the frequency of the incident light, the higher the speed. So, the speed of the photoelectrons is going to increase, so therefore we can cross out these two. So, options are either C or D. Now it says the light is of a lower intensity, and intensity affects the amount of the photoelectrons emitted per second, and since we've got a lower intensity, it's going to decrease the amount of photoelectrons per second, and the answer therefore is C. So that grade 12 are the multiple choice questions for the paper 1. Um, it's just a sample of the different types of questions. Please go through the different questions and please use the techniques that I've shown you to try and make sure that you get the correct answers even if you're not 100% sure. Please understand that multiple choice is not multiple gates. You're not supposed to just look at this and go, oh, I haven't seen enough C's, I must be a C because that's not how it's set either. Right, have a great day.